Hi everybody, Tim MX here and today I want to show you how to achieve such a golden skin or gold skin look for your color grading in DaVinci Resolve. But first, hit the thumb up, let's rock the intro! Do you know the famous movie Goldfinger from 1964? Then you will probably know this famous scene of this girl laying on the bed and totally covered in gold. No? Hey, you kidding me? <laughs> I know that you know that I know that you know it. Um, what did I really want to say? Uh, yes, this scene which you probably know because you know. I know that you, let's leave this for now. This scene inspired me to replicate this golden skin in color grading without fusion only using the tools on the color page and yes, I know in this very confusing note tree here. <laughs> but before we start, let me explain that the origin golden skin from Goldfinger is much less reddish and much more greenish as gold looks like in reality. So this version looks more glamorous, but finally you can turn it into this more greenish color if you want so. Furthermore, there are other methods out there to achieve such results or maybe much better results using Fusion or Nuke for example, but my intention is to use only tools from the color page to keep it simple as possible for you. So if you want to know how to do it, just follow my breakdown, I will explain every step. As first I thought about how can I create this golden color and that was the hottest part because there are many different approaches and methods and not every approach can be done in DaVinci Resolve and so I did it in my way, oops, that's another story. If I turn all those notes here on and off, you can see the result. As first, you should adjust your footage correctly. Exposure and color balancing. This is done in the second note here. And the first is reserved for noise reduction. I skipped this note because we don't have much noise in the shot. In this Exposure note, I paid attention to the highlights. It's important to know that you need a bit space later for the contrast, so I leave it somewhere around 800. Then in the highlight note, I lifted up the highlights a bit. Uh, in my case, I did it separately uh, for the luma and the colors because I want to avoid too much saturation. Because if you lift up the highlights too much, you lift up the saturation too, or be correct, the chroma. And that's not what we want. So make sure to separate them and adjust it separately. You can do it without separation too, but then keep an eye on your vectorscope. Let me show you quickly the results. So to see something, I have to connect the highlight node directly to the out. Now you can see the result so far. Okay, let's reconnect this and connect the next node, the RGB mixer node to the out. And this node is where the golden color starts. All I've done here is to increase the red to 1.23 because we need a bit more red output for the next steps. Why? This golden color is built up of three colors, R, G and B and every color with different values. The values for green and blue can be set to zero. I adjusted these values later a bit to balance out the gold color. If you skip this note, you will get a golden color too, but maybe a bit too yellowish, greenish. This depends on your footage. Okay, next step is the Zaria node stack here. And this is the core of this look. If you want so, you can see it if I turn the stack on and off, but let me explain it step by step. The first node here in this line is my skin qualifier. Here I created the skin selection and tracked it. And the second node here in this line, I created the color just by using the RGB channel mixer. So here you can see the values for the RGB mixer. For red, in the red output channel, type 1.25 for red and leave the green and blue untouched. In the green channel, set green to 1.03 and leave the red and blue untouched. 
And finally, in the blue channel, set blue to 0.34 and let the red and green as it is. Now comes a trick. Just jump to the saturation slider and pull it all the way up. Yeah, we are done now. Gentlemen, begin radical vertical impact simulation now. No, wrong direction, guys and girls. Happens to me sometimes. So let's turn the helm. So what to do now is to decrease the saturation all the way down or just type in zero. Yeah, look at this. No idea how I did it, but you know, a blind man may sometimes hit the mark. Anyway, looks good so far for you. But we are not there yet, so let's go on. Last step here is to invert the key input. This node is a heart of our golden skin because it gives us a base gold color. The value here in the RGB mixer channel are based on a mid gold color mix, so trust me, these values are exactly what you should use if you want to achieve a golden look. But you know that I know that gold looks naturally more yellowish greenish, remember? This note here, the RGB red note, here I pushed the red a bit more. So in other words, this is my adjustment note for the color, not this one here, not the RGB G mix note, because I don't want to touch this note. In this way, I can separate the adjustment of the gold from the gold mix note. You can see it if you know if I turn this RGB red note here on and off. Okay, I think you got the idea. Let's move on. In the next note here, this flatten note, I pushed up the shadows a bit and decreased the highlights just to flatten the contrast a bit to take away the harshness. Okay, in general, that's what I've done to create the golden color for the skin. You can use this technique for all your footage it will always work almost the same. And if it looks not golden enough, just adjust this red RGB node here. Uh, you know, you can name it as you want, but in my case, I just want to remember that I've added more red to the red channel and decreased the red in the green and blue areas a bit. That's only for adjustment. So if you want so, we are done with the color. But if you want to know how this more metallic look is created, just don't click away. I will show you how it's done. As you can see, this looks okay so far, but to be honest, not really like gold, right? Okay, next note is simple. All I've done here is to use the beauty effects here in the open effects library. Just add the beauty effects to this note. And if I turn this effect on and off, you can see what it does to our skin. Just look at this skin. If I turn this note on and off, it looks so beautiful. Nope, just kidding. All you should do is to switch the operating mode from automatic to advanced. Then I increased the smoothing threshold to the max and the diffuse lightning to around minus 1.5. This values depends on your footage. Just try out to balance it out a bit. The diffuse lightning should be lowered because we want a more reflective look, not a diffused, because gold reflects, you know, it's a metal and metal reflects a lot. But you know that and I know that you know it and but we already had that. Just lower the diffuse slider to around minus one point something like this. Now we come to the texture recovery section and here it's where the math begins to be more complex and doing a really great job for us. If I move this texture threshold slider here, you can see what it does finally. This slider lets you set the threshold at which detail is reintroduced to the image. The more I lift this threshold up, the more details will be introduced back into the image. But there's one thing you should know about the texture threshold. Texture threshold must always be equal to or lower than smoothing threshold. So lowering smoothing threshold may also result in lowering texture threshold. So be careful if you are using it. In my case, I set up the smoothing threshold to one so I can set the texture threshold to whatever I like if it's under 1.0 and I set it 
to around 0.68. The add texture lets you exaggerate recovered texture at values higher than 1 or minimize recovered texture at values less than 1. So I want to add a bit more texture, therefore I pushed it up to around 2.3 because a metallic surface has this rough surface, even if it's polished. That's why metal reflects the light in every direction and makes it shine very bright in the specular light. We want to imitate that effect and therefore I add this texture here. On the other hand, if I lower this slider to a value under the default zero value, I remove texture in the dependency of the texture threshold. That's a very important step to achieve this metallic look here. I set this value to uh, to. 3, something like that. And by the way, if you check this little checkbox here, you can see where DaVinci Resolve detects the texture. This lets you view the isolated texture mask that's being recovered by the texture gain and texture threshold sliders, so you can fine tune what you want to preserve. Let's see what feature recovery can do for us. The feature recovery slider lets you set the threshold at which detail is reintroduced to the image. Okay, that's about the beauty effects. An important side note, this beauty open effects is only available in the studio version of DaVinci Resolve. So finally, you can see clearly what we've done with the beauty effect tool. If I turn this effect on and off, you can see it. I guess it looks great so far. The last note is only a bit of dehaze. This filter automatically generates a simulated death mat, which is used to apply more of this corrective color adjustment to far away parts of the image that would be more affected by haze effects and less color adjustments to close up parts of the image. Again, only available in the studio version of DaVinci Resolve and however, the simulated dev mask is not going to be perfect, so additional controls exist to let you make adjustments to it to achieve a better result. I only adjust the highlights because I want to give them a bit more punch, a bit more clarity, just a bit. A value of around 6 looks good to me. On off switching this tool on and off, you can see what it does to our image. But all this, what I've done here in this line of our layer mix deck, works only if we change the blend mode of the layer mixer node. This is one of the essential steps you should keep in mind. A usual result you will achieve with an overlay or a very subtle one with a soft light blend mode, but the most aggressive effect you will achieve with a hard light effect, because hard light is the opposite of overlay. This gives us a very harsh looking result, but that's exactly what we want, because we want to achieve this metal-like look, right? Okay, in general we are done. In sake of this tutorial, I will skip the explanation of the remaining notes, because those are only for final fine adjustments, for the eye colors, the tooth, the lips, a bit sharpening, and finally a bit of desaturation. The desaturation is really important, because this look layer mixer stack, which I explained, will bring in a very strong saturation into your image. So you have to desaturate everything in a node near the end of your color grading tree. I've done this in this deset node here and as you can see, I've added a subtle glow and of course a film grain as my last step. Anyway, we finished this tutorial and as always dear friends of the hand turn false colors, if you like this little tutorial just hit the thumb up and if you want to see more content like this, please don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. Thanks for watching and listening, you all a great time and stay safe, bye.